this your your juice. to move out of the way. Yeah, that'd be all right. Share it on the leads one as well. On the leads one. Uh, yeah. There we go. Alright. Are we live? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Hi. Let's just test the sound. Yeah, sure. Uh, do I, I'm just going to talk normally. Testing, one, two, three, four. Can just we have a... Bit of a delay. Oh, can we have a, a yes or a no on the audio, please, yeah. people, on Facebook? Right. Uh, let's just test the sound. Yeah, sure. Uh, do I, I'm just bit of a delay. Uh, this is a delay. But this, isn't, or this is already happening. Can we have a, a yes or a no? I think the sound's all right. Yeah, good. All right, okay, cool. Yeah. Right. Crack on. Hey, guys, I'm Scott from Reds. I'm James from Reds. And today we are cooking for you, like we do every Thursday and every Sunday. Welcome to the Sunday service. Today we have a meat-tastic event for you. We're going to be corn showing you of co meat. a corn corn a -copia. A -copia of, uh, of meat. So we've got a few things that we're doing. We're going traditional barbecue uh, for one section of today, which is going to be beef rib. We call it beef long because sometimes you get like kind of the, the short ribs, but that's not what we're doing today. We're doing the big, huge ones. I mean, I've got that over here. You can just see that big chunk of meat over here waiting to be uh, waiting to be prepped for us. That's We're going to be Joe, the cameraman. That's Joe, the cameraman behind there. Another big chunk of meat. Another big chunk of meat. Uh, and then, so we're going to be smoking and showing you a couple of tricks on how to get the most awesome beef ribs every single time at home. We're also going to be doing what's called a devil's cornbread, mm. which is cornbread. Why do you call it? Why is it so devilish? Because it's evil in that oh, it's right. got chilies uh, like laced all the way through it, and you're going to be you're going to be eating that because we we want to make nice. that first, get it in the oven. And get it out by the end of the program so you guys can see what it's like. Why are we doing all this first? What do you mean? Why are we doing all this first? Why are we not going straight into the big main event? Uh, because you have to. <laughs> right. uh, also, that's not cooked yet. <laughs> yeah, we've got some beef ribs already on the smoker. They haven't quite hit temperature yet, but it's okay. We have someone who's, uh, who's coming to collect the food later on this afternoon, so yeah. we don't want it to be ready for the program. We want it to be ready for him on arrival. Mm. Right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's my excuse. Uh, right, a couple of hellos, first of all. Uh, another member of my family, Karen Douglas, oh, my sister. Uh, another roll call. What, right, is, it, okay. what is it you call her? Uh, oh, uh, half, 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 hog, 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 Hogwarts, no. no hog, uh, uh, Liz Small, Liz Hobbit feet, yeah. Hobbit feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, okay. Karen. All right, Kaz. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Heward is watching. Hello, Robert James, Chris Sparks, back on, one of our most regular viewer. Um, so sure. my first boss, Darren Anley, the man who uh, inspired me to go into business for myself. Oh, you really screwed well. him up then, didn't you? Then, did, yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. I just been <laughs> Why did you inspire forever. him? So, hey, Darren, I hope you're all right, mate. Uh, Silver Murna, he's back again. He's obviously a glutton for punishment. Um, Michael Pratt, Pratt he's watching as well. Carl Tufnell as well, another regular yes, viewer. Yeah, who's Carl. Um, a mate of my... And does maintenance well. for us yeah, on, yeah. on occasion. He does, yeah, yeah. He's a good lad. Uh, do, Darren's asking, do I get a takeaway? No, sadly not. not uh, Jan's watching. Good. Uh, Liam Grogan is watching. Hello, Lee Liam. Price, Robert James, um, and uh, mm -hmm. Matthew Wilson Hurst. Everyone's that's on, a, aren't they? That's a, an awesome roll call. Yeah, it is. Welcome, anyway. So, we're, we're doing beef, in case you've just joined, we're doing some beef ribs today. Mm. Smoked. Amazing. We're doing some uh, low and slow. Unfortunately, the low and slow is a bit too low and slow today. Yeah. So we're hoping that the beef ribs that we got in the smoker now will be almost cooked. Low quality, slow delivery. Yeah, that's you got it. We're also doing cornbread. It's a devil cornbread, super spicy. And uh, we're going to be doing that with a barbecue butter, like a compound butter that you make mm. in, in cling film. You make it, you roll it up. We'll show you how to do that. And then, uh, but what, what we also want to do today is prepare for next Sunday. So yeah. we're going to get a brisket, a rolled brisket, which you can get from your butcher. I'm going to show you guys how to corn it, how to yep. pickle it. You need to corn it for seven days, 
And then in seven days on Sunday next week, we're going to show you guys how to make the most awesome classic Reuben sandwiches for all the family. Do you think we should have started preparing this seven days ago? I think so, yeah. I mean, it's about it's been seven very days off uh, cooking, isn't it? We'll see if it, the, the beef rib should be, the, should be there. It should be there by the end of the be. program. Should. Okay. Right, so do we? Do, I think we need to just get on with the cornbread because the cornbread is going to take about 15 or 20 minutes and uh, we're going to crack on with I'm that. In. Yeah, right. I'm in. Right, so mixing bowl is below you. Where's my gloves? Oh, oh just over there. Well done. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of all the meat and get rid of all the exciting stuff and go straight into the veggie stuff, which is uh, yeah, quite da unfortunate. Uh, Daniel Jackson said he can't rush perfection, but um, he's obviously never seen the show before. Yeah, <laughs> it's certainly not perfection. No. All right, so what you're going to do you is... You got me some big gloves as well. I did, they're XL. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's about little, time. It's about time. Stop going to the uh, Jeremy Beadle shop for gloves. Cornbread. So you want to get a spoon, which is, which is over there in your glass, uh, you want to get a mixing bowl, which is down there near your uh, near trotters, <laughs> and uh, and you're going to get um, you're going to get some vegetable oil. Yeah. You're going to get some plain flour, about 200 grams. Okay. What's what? So you want that's your that's your plain flour. I so know what flour I looks put like. Put the dry ingredients in first. This is not my first rodeo. I think it might be. I was letting you finish. When the last did you make cornbread? Oh. Be honest. Uh, <laughs> I don't never made cornbread. This I is the first for you. It's no. fine. I like okay, bread, so though. 200 grams of plain flour, 200 yeah. grams of polenta, which is um, which is like a corn product, right? Yeah. Uh, you want to go for the coarse stuff if you can. Don't go for the really smooth stuff. You want that texture. Uh, baking, you baking, powder? baking powder. Baking powder. That's yeah, it. That's How much it. of two, that? Two tea. <laughs> we've got fans on us blown <laughs> everywhere. Uh, we've right. got two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. Well done. Yeah, nice. One teaspoon of, uh, of caster sugar. It's a lot like salt. Yeah, it's not. Uh, then you've got, uh, oh no, that was salt. So, yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, 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 right. Then, then uh, one tablespoon of, of sugar. Cast Go sugar, in with sugar, yeah, cast sugar, yeah. nice one. One large egg. <clears throat> nice. Your oil, which is, uh, I think there's about three tablespoons of oil in there. Give that just kind of loosens the whole uh, the whole mixture. Lucy goosey back again. You don't want to overwork this. It's just a little bit of a, a bit of a key. So going with the yeah, oil. Yeah. And then, and then you need some buttermilk. You need 300, which is basically one of those small little tubs of buttermilk. Where's the um, whisker? You don't need a whisk, you need a spoon. Where's my spoon? It's just there, in that glass. Oh, you can use that, yeah, that's, that's fine. Oh, that doesn't look great, does it? Get one of the, the metal ones, maybe. It's just, oh, right, good shot. Yeah, uh, buttermilk, 320 mils of that. That's, right. that's what's gonna make it super special today, yeah, buttermilk. You can use regular milk if you want. But, uh, but, but, but I'm not going to, uh, I hope this actually works because uh, this recipe was slightly different to the one that we do in the restaurant. Right. It's looking super dry already. No, it's not. Joe, do you want to come in and have a look at that? I reckon it's looking rather snazzy. Here we go. Away for you. Might need some more buttermilk again. I <laughs> know. <laughs> yeah, we had a bit of a buttermilk disaster last week. Do you need right, some more Joe, buttermilk? That's enough close up. That's enough close up. Pan back out. Wide shot, wide shot. Uh, this is looking good actually, to be you fair. Reckon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll bring the buttermilk just in case. Yeah, bring it over just in case. You never know. Uh, I'll see if I can read on here. So, uh, it's looking good. Uh, Silver's saying, quick suggestion for you guys open Reds in Barnsley. I need a nice more call. local Reds than Leeds and Sheffield. I mean, yeah, we're, nice we're obviously we're looking at a little takeaway model. Um, so, I think we could probably squeeze one in in Barnsley. Nice idea. Like yeah. it. Yeah, I like that. Too. Right, I'm going to get some, uh, I'm going to make this devilish. All right. So I've got some red chilies, <coughs> which nice. I'm slicing up here. I'm also going to slice up some green chilies as well. Yeah. Now I'm keeping the seeds in because this is a devil's cornbread. Yeah, I know. We want it spice. This is when we uh, do make stuff spicy. And I've also got some um, some Tabasco. Now I really like the chipotle one. Right. But I've gone for the green. What's the green one called? Why have you gone for the green one? Habanero. Oh uh, no, jalapeno. 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 Why so, did you go for the green one? Because that's, that's, that's the only one kind of, we had in. That's the only one I could find. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the chipotle one would be nice as well. However, we haven't done that. Okay, that's good. There Thank you. Go. you. Uh, like it. Slam that down there. I reckon that mixture is looking good, mate. I'm it's really chuffed. Perfect. With that. Yeah. Well, if your spoon can stand up in it, uh, right? That's that's the side from someone who makes a lot of cornbread. <laughs> um, right. I'm going to go in with some. Uh, I want to make it spicy. I don't want to add too much of this liquid in there because it kind of messes with the baking power. It does. <laughs> Don't want to mess with the baking power. No. So that's just going to give it that little light kind of lift. citrusy lift. Yeah, yeah, right, spicy so, anyway. lift. I'm going to also top it with that as well, I think. Right, yeah. Right, and then we're going to go in with two different, I don't know, it does, are we going to go in with two different ones or do you, th you want to make muffins? Um, I think that's, uh, I mean, I don't, have, we got enough, have we got enough tackle for it? Let's go for muffins. Let's do six muffins and then yeah. maybe put the rest in there. Now, you, all you want to do is just put a maybe one of those tablespoons in there. Probably that. Yeah. Yeah. Good, it doesn't want to go to the top. That's it. Oh, yes, lovely. Look at that, you're professional, mate. 
Hang no, on you think I owned a restaurant? You think so? All right, that's looking really good. We've all got our skills. So I'm going in now. A little bit more of this chile. Right. Just because we can. So is the, there's a bit of a thing in there. Does it stand with cornbread as well, where you're not meant to get it on the sides, like with Yorkshire puddings? Uh, Otherwise, yeah, you can do. You're right. It stops it from rising. It does, yeah. And you want um, you can use muffin. You know, there's little paper muffin things as well. What they called? Muffin Muff casings. Muffin casings. Yeah, use them too if you if want. If you to. haven't got muffins, can you use anything else? No. Well, you could. You could just use a bowl, like I, I was going to oh, right, suggest okay. here. <laughs> right, I'm going to go in with back, this. That's back, fine. Backfired Good. on with that one. One, two, three, four. Have you greased my bowl? I've greased your bowl. You've also got a little bit of parchment paper in the bottom of it as well. Right. Just to stop things from sticking um, when we're live on, on air. <laughs> we're on air now. We are on air. Do you think this was a practice? It often gets a bit awkward. It does. Right, I'm going to go Am for... Am I going in? Am I going in? Yeah, go in. I don't see why not. Okay, there you go, Joe. That's your... Uh, that's a, I think that looks quite pretty. I might go for a little bit of pepper on there, actually. Yeah, go for it. Just a little bit of pepper, just to kind of... So cornbread is a real kind of staple in the US, isn't it? Um, oh, yeah. And But we make it slightly differently, don't we? Because theirs is a lot drier, and ours is way more muffiny. And when I say we, I don't mean the British public. I just mean us at Reds. Us, us. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, us. you're right. Um, I mean, listen. Those what count. We also, do, we also do a sweet potato one. Oh, we uh, do? In the restaurant. Now that is absolutely banging. Why um, don't you tell them how we... Shall I tell them how we got that how we got yes. the recipe for that? Great, yeah. cool. Where were we again? In Raleigh, in North, uh, South North Carolina. Carolina. North, yeah. North Carolina. So we're in a uh, restaurant, Raleigh in uh, South, now, uh, there, now, see, now, but, uh, South Carolina. North Carolina. I don't know where Raleigh anyway, is. Anyway, Raleigh, Raleigh, Carolinas. Yeah, North um, Carolinas. And uh, we were in this restaurant and we were eating the food. It was amazing. And we, we ordered a portion of this um, sweet potato cornbread. And we were chatting to the owner and we sort of said, oh my God, your cornbread's amazing. Like, you know, what, where did you get this recipe from? And he said, oh, it was my great grandma's recipe who died in like 66 and we've kept the recipe and it's been a, a massive family secret um, and the, we make it every day in the restaurant. And so we were like, oh my God, it's amazing. We own a restaurant back in the UK and we'd love to serve something like this. And the absolute diamond went off into the kitchen, wrote it down on a scrap of paper um, and came out and gave us it. He did. They're so open. And just gave us his like, whole family secret. They are so open over there. I Might go it. back and see whether or not he's got a recipe for coronavirus. <laughs> a vaccine. <laughs> vaccine, yeah. <laughs> All right, good. I'm going to keep this here because I might, I, we might want to spice that up uh, when we come to the service. Right, so cornbread's in. We're going to uh, go very quickly onto the compound butter. So everyone loves butter, but this is a bit different. It's a barbecue butter. I think mm. this is in our book as well. Yeah. Let there be meat available in all good bo uh, bookstores. Uh, um, just yeah. at Amazon. Oh, Amazon. Okay, fine. Is it not available in Waterstones? Oh, I suppose it's closed anyway. I mean, so Amazon's a good bookstop. That opens on the 15th, though, so you can go. Well, Amazon there. does. Uh, no, uh, Waterstones. Oh, right. Yeah. Hey, this is good data. Compound butter. Let's do this. Yeah. Have you guys Why? made a compound butter before for your yeah. steaks or your chops at home? Why is it compounded? It's not. But why is it called compound butter? I have no idea. Maybe one of our guests or our viewers uh, can tell us why it's called that. Uh, you can't just default to getting other people to answer the they've questions. They've got the internet. I don't the have the internet to hand. I don't know why it's called the compound. I thought this is Jeff. They keep telling me how this is the internet. This is not the internet. This mate. is the internet. You this say. is the internet. Come on, let's do, let's go do, let's do this. Come on. Right, come, come on. on. You've got butter. Half a stick of it. Joe, I don't know if you want to come in here, mate. You want it He's soft. He's scared now of coming Sorry, in for close-up shots. You want it soft. <laughs> and now, do you guys remember making your basic dry rub about a week and a, uh, two weeks ago, whenever it was? You want to get a teaspoon of that in there. Yay. And then you want to go in with your favorite barbecue sauce. Just one tablespoon. What you don't want to do is put too much in because it'll change the consistency mm. of, the, wow. of the butter. How All many right. beers have you had so far? Do you know what? Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Cheers. Uh, I'm on the ID in case anyone uh, is asking. Yeah. Right. No, let's give no, this a mix no around. One, no one's asking. No one's asking. No one's All right, asking. fine. Okay, Joe, we're going to give this a bit of a mix around. Now that's going to, I mean, I've used an unsalted butter here. You could use salted. Salt's pretty good on, on bread. Certainly on the cornbread it is anyway. I love salted butter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've actually been known to add salt to butter. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I need some cling film. There's a little technique here, guys. It's, you're basically going to make a little sausage. It's here. It's all ready for oh. you. You're going to make a sausage <laughs> of butter. Butter sausage. <laughs> a little sausage. Yeah. The truffle butter. No, <laughs> no, that's a different one. <laughs> that's not all right, the fan's going to play havoc with your, uh, with your cling film here, isn't it? I'll hold this. You get the knife. Yeah. You chop that. Knife's here. There you go. Woo-wee! 
Let's go. You are acting a lot like my carer again, <laughs> which is a problem. Sometimes you need that. All right, okay. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spoon it into the middle. Mm -hmm. It's quite soft, that one, isn't it? It's very soft, but you want it soft so that it all mixes in. Yeah. Okay, and then if you just make that to a sausage, that'd be great. <laughs> 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 oh, what a oh, you did a good job though. Yeah, mate. Look at this. The thing is, you, you don't. You, oh no, maybe not. Oh, oh! You don't really. Oh, you've made a little nugget of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, not a, that's not. That's not. Listen, that is. You've made. It looks like you like look like a drug mule. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you could just bend over in a seated <laughs> position. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. This is what the, it looks like something from the Prison Express. It doesn't look great. Yeah, man. yeah. I like it. Well done, yeah. Take the ends off, makes it look nice and pretty. Yeah. Nice little uh, thingy down there. Well done. Good. Right, yeah. I think that's absolutely fine. Don't turn it over. Um, I quite like a large a, a disc. A girthy of, butter. A girthy <laughs> disc of butter, <laughs> uh, which is why when I'm ever making my compound butters, this is why I do yeah. it like this. Oh, yeah, it's one of your favourite pastimes. <laughs> what, what are you going to do with that now? Uh, fridge. Yes. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. Okay. Your other ones over there. It's ready yeah, made. Yeah. So I go pop this in the fridge. All right. Cool. Thank you. Just for that. there. Right. Let's shift over. Get rid of some of these ingredients. Do, need, do you need this now? Uh, no. All oh, right. Okay. Well, only when the, when the when the cornbread's ready. All oh, right. Well, I will actually then put this in the fridge. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So we've done our cornbread. That's in the oven. We've got our compound butter refrigerating and getting hard. Um, we've got a few little bits to get on with here for for next week. Now I'm going to show you guys how to. How to make the most awesome corned beef. Have you guys ever had a corned beef sandwich? Like the mm. proper good stuff. I mean, we're not messing about here See, with like corned the, beef hash stuff or whatever like, you call it. I like the stuff out of the tin. What? <laughs> I know, so I Yorkshire. I know. You, you get that weird, nice man. white crunchy bread, cr crusty bread, Branston pickle. Yeah. Thick. Butter? Uh, you need butter on that? No, nah, not really. Really? No. Nah, well, I never really have butter on sandwiches. I only have it on like crumpets and butter. toast and stuff. Yeah. What's butter? Butter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do. Let's move on then. Okay, so brisket. If you go to your butchers, they're probably going to give you something similar to that. Now, I've actually chopped this off. What was it? A really a cow? A really big cow. Yeah. <laughs> a really. It was a. It was a huge. Um, uh, it's called a pack of brisket. So mm. it's the flat, which is what this is. You want to ask for the flat for this product, and then. But it also has got the point. So it's from the chest of the of the of the cow. Tell them about the flat and the point. It's from the chest of the cow. The flat. Uh, which is this piece of uh, uh, this piece of meat here? It's it, it basically you can see the striations of the muscles. So they go this way here, and that's your lean. That's your lean part of the of the brisket. You then have the point, which is a, a muscle that's worked less less often, and that works. That the muscle goes in the exact opposite direction. It's a bit like that. What would that you is what you call fatty brisket, and that's the best bit. On you, what would you say is the point? The, I'm the, I'm on point everywhere. No, no. What what part of you is the <laughs> point? The, point. The, the, the muscle that's worked work, work yeah. the less often. Uh, I probably probably my ears with you. I would say <laughs> uh, they they tend to work not that often yeah, with yeah. you. They just ignore that. Good, good. Right. So you got your brisket, uh, and what you want to do now is you want to try and find uh, a, a, a decent size kind of uh, non-reactive bowl or a, or a tray, something that you can whoa, put whoa, that whoa, in. Whoa, 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 whoa! What is a non-reactive bowl? Forty-one years of striding this planet, and I've never heard the term. A non-reactive non <laughs> non bowl? Because you're, you're getting you salt just, and you acid. Make this shit up you're not. Can spot? someone go online and make sure that non-reactive is a thing, please? Non-reactive is something that isn't going to go rusty or minging. In How long are you cooking it for? You're cooking it. It's going to be in the fridge for a week. Right, so all the on. acid, you're, you're going to eat make your, your words on this one. Bowl, guys. You're going to eat your words on this one. I'm yeah, telling but you. Everyone's got loads, mass, uh, like loads of non-reactive bowls. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. This is a non-reactive bowl. Yeah. Oops. It's plastic. Right, that's not going to react with anything. Just say a plastic bowl. If you then. use a, a, you know, like a cast iron pot, it can yeah, go yeah, rusty. Yeah, yeah. Right. Don't use that. Okay. Th that's a reactive bowl. Yeah. Don't use that. Okay, so we're going to go in with this in a minute. But what I'm going to do in the meantime is get over some hot water. Yep. Which I've got rolling, rolling away. Rolling boiling. Rolling away here. Yeah, it's still boiling as well. It's still boiling. Yeah. And then I'm going to show you guys how to make your um, your pickling spice. So corned, uh, corned beef is basically just pickled beef, right? I mean, the Argentinians came up with the idea uh, through, through the war, I think, to help kind of push their product out to the world. Yeah, I bet you didn't uh, know that. No, I think you're mixing up your facts there. I I might be the American GIs used to get corned beef, like, Argen and then Argentina give it out Argentina came to up with the idea. Who did? Argentina. Argentina, I mean. <laughs> 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 I mean, it sounded realistic there. But it did, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. All right, we're going to come back to that one in a second. In the meantime, let's go down here because this is what you want to do. You want to get some boiling hot water. Yeah. You want to get your, your salt in here. Now, there's, you've got about 
I think there's about 250 grams Gross. of salt. You want to get that in there. I'll be getting a whisk in a second. You also have about 100 grams of brown sugar. That's a uh, soft, dark brown sugar. Nice. Could you use white sugar? You can use white sugar. Yeah. In fact, um, I've got, um, I've got, no, I mean, you can, but I didn't. You wouldn't. You would. You can. No, you wouldn't. It's fine. Bro. If I you would. had the option, you wouldn't. Uh, I like using brown because it gives a nice colour and it's, mm. it's got a little slightly, I don't know, it's got a slightly caramel finish to it, hasn't it? Nice. All right, so I'm just going to mix, mix that through in the hot water. Obviously, you don't want to be putting the beef in hot water, no. so I'll show you what to do next. The next thing, really important, is that you need to find some curing salts. <laughs> so this is a nitrite or a nitrate-based product. Is that an Argentina nitrate? It's an Argentina. <laughs> they they made, it, made it up in Argentina a few years ago during the war to, to help drive uh, international sales. <laughs> <laughs> so you want two, two tablespoons of your pickling salt. You, yeah. Sometimes it's pink. And the reason, why, why do they make it pink? To make the boys wink? No, but it's a nice rhyme. <laughs> it's so that you don't get it mixed up with salt. Oh. So you know. What that like red diesel. That red diesel, that's yeah, great. Yeah. So I'm going to go in with that as well. Could you use red diesel in this? Uh, it looks like red diesel now. <laughs> right. probably good. Yeah. I'm going to go in with uh, three garlic cloves that have been crushed. Nice. Uh, mustard seeds, one tablespoon. Yeah. Peppercorns, another tablespoon. Nice. Juniper berries, one teaspoon. Try getting juniper berries we, in a pandem. We tried to get some bay leaves, but these are curry leaves and they look like bay leaves, so uh, <laughs> we're going with curry leaves on this occasion. <laughs> uh, I've got some, I, I don't even know what that is. Oh, it's cumin. I've got a teaspoon of cumin. Cumin teaspoon again. Of nutmeg. What's that brown one there? Uh, oh, allspice. All spice. All spice. So another teaspoon of allspice. Coriander seeds, a tablespoon. Lovely stuff. Uh, Chris, teaspoon of chili flakes. Uh, can't you now. Sorry. Okay. Midway. Six cloves. Yes, you could use seven or five, but six cloves in there. Eight. And then what's that? You want to? It's a cigar. It's a cigar, a small cigar. <laughs> it's, uh, it's your cinnamon stick. So I just crush that up and put it in. That there. is super Christmassy. Isn't it? it is very Christmassy. Uh, and then you've got about... One uh, onion. You've got one onion in there. I've just put it into bits. <laughs> right, and I'm just going to mix it around. <laughs> <laughs> Mix that around so that the, the salt, the sugar, and all of the curing salts mm. all been dissolved. You want to make sure it's uh, it's working as a yeah. curing salt. Any questions, guys? In the meantime, uh, yeah. So Richard Egan's watching. All right, dude. Hello, uh, Richard. Darren is asking. Uh, Darren Anley is asking. Uh, would that be the beer from our very own brewery? Yes. 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 It, yes, it, it is indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're uh, very committed to that. Robert James, wait till you add salt to your cream and yogurt, James. What was that? Uh, Robert James is saying you should add salt to your cream and your yoghurt. Apparently that's pretty amazing. What, 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 what happens to it? Does it just... <clears> I, think, I think what you said has come across. Because oh. Dave Sheldon was saying, oh, what's truffle butter? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that recipe. That's a different, <laughs> <that's a> different <laughs> programme altogether. We'll do there. that recipe another night. <laughs> uh, Richie is saying Reds have some of the tastiest food around in Nottingham. So thank you very much for that. Wonderful. Uh, Christine Moore's watching. Hello, the Hello, uh, You're right, queen of the sauces. Queen of the sauces. Uh, let's have a look. Silver is saying, where do you guys test your new recipes? Here. There. <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, there. No, yeah, this is a test, basically. Uh, Michael <laughs> Pratt says, cow flaps. I don't know where he's coming from no, with that one. No, don't know about that. Let's move on. Uh, so right. Hang on. Dave Sheldon said, non-reactive means metal or aluminium as it reacts and spoils the meat. You can use plastic or ceramic. Thank you. Which is plastic. why we have. Uh, everyone's coming in with this plastic glass <laughs> or ceramic and non-reactive. Chris Sparks says, yes. would molasses improve the flavour? Same thing Probably. as brown sugar, yeah, so it's got a similar flavour profile. Definitely great yeah. idea. Uh, Josh is watching, all right, bestie. All right. Um, and Gary Hutchinson's watching as well. Oh, hi, Gary, you're right there. Yeah. Right, I'm going to go in now into our non-reactive bowl, mm. and I'm going to put in I, I, all I our could, ingredients. I could quite possibly react to you. You are. Keeping the non-reactive joke going. You are a joke. It's okay. not all, you haven't, it's Give not Give me that, that water, please, mate. Top that water up in there for me, please, if you yeah. don't mind. Thank you. It's lovely. Now I'm putting cold water in there, guys. Very important. Why is it important to put cold in again? You, you do not want to put hot water uh, into there and then put your beef into it and then put it in the fridge because it'll Trust just that. bring the temperature of the fridge uh, uh, right up and it'll make it unsafe. That is a really fridge. interesting fact in it because everyone says don't put hot stuff in the fridge and my grandma used to say it's because it'll turn it and it'll all be bad but it's not it's because it pushes the temperature yeah change the temperature of the fridge you don't want to do that. Learning all right. every day. So there you are that's basically your pickling spice. Do you want to get a little close up on this one Joe? You can oh it smells amazing can you smell mm. that? That's awesome. Yeah, I can't smell it. Right. Um, <laughs> Chris Sparks says Scott is pulling your pilsner as pink Himalayan. Himalay oh, oh! Pink Himalayan salt. See where he's going with this. I had too many Red Bulls. Pink Himalayan salt is naturally pink from Pakistan. That so. is right. He's right, actually. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. However, the the pink, the, the pink salt that you get from uh, 
wherever you buy it from. Uh, <laughs> it's, shop? it's like neon pink. It's Is like it? really pink. Yeah, 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 like red diesel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can we just say hello to Bonnie? Little Bonbon bon says hi. Hello, Bonnie. Hello, Bonnie. All right, darling. Okay, so that's good. I thought I might have to uh, weigh that down with a can right. or a non-reactive piece of equipment. Or weigh it down with the, all the responsibility and stuff. Which has obviously already happened. So yeah. I don't need to because that's actually uh, submerged well under the, pickling, uh, under the pickling liquor. Nice. Now that's going to go in a fridge. Um, if you, and, and it'll go in there for a week until next Sunday and we'll come back. Yeah. Uh, I'll also next Sunday do all this again, just in case you guys don't get a chance to do it. Wow, uh, today. that's going to be interesting, isn't it? Now, the next thing you want to do is, um, is you, you can either use this, or you can use one of those really big Ziploc bags. You know right. the Jiffy bags with a little zipper on the top? And if you do that, it just, means you don't need to make as much liquid. I'd put two in, I'd put it in two bags there with yeah, you. Yeah, just in case it splits. Did you just belch then and try I did, hide yeah, it? I was just um, having a little bit of a, a beer burp. Excuse me. This is disgusting. <laughs> people again, yep, yeah, people turning off in droves. That's going to be great. Okay, so we're good. I'm really happy with that. Now, on to the Do main you want to move that out of the way? Uh, why don't you put it in the... F yeah, that's yeah. It. put it in the, in the, the theoretical fridge. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind. Thank you. I'm just going to place it on top of the actual freezer. Yeah, good, cool. Okay. Right, just going to have a little re reset here. Right, let's go to the main event. Right. You guys have had beef rib... Uh, if you've, if you've had beef rib before, uh, you probably haven't had it this way because it does take a long time to cook what, in the smoker. What do you want the temp to? Uh, I, need, I need it in like, it needs to be at about 83 degrees to oh. 85 degrees. Do you know what? You might potentially just make it. Woo! Okay, looking good. Okay. Right, so beef rib. Have a, oh, is it not there? I never said it. <laughs> Joe, do you want to come in here, mate? I just want to show the guys the cut that they want to ask, they're ask, ask their butcher for. So this just looks like a steak. But obviously when you flip it over, you've got three huge bones. It's called the Jacob's Ladder. If you go to your, uh, if you go to your favorite butcher, they will trim it up for you as well, which they've done a pretty good job at Sykes House Farm for us, but they've left this little bit, bit of fat on here. That is quite a lot of fat. It's a lot of fat, but to be fair, that's not seen you fat. So right. that is gonna, because it's yellow, it's gonna, it's gonna break down. And actually fat is flavor. So I'm probably not gonna trim that. I, I, I think I might just leave that. So tell everyone, because <coughs> you once like totally blew my mind with this. Tell everyone why they call it Jacob's Ladder. Uh, it's because uh, there's a fable in the um, in the Bible yeah. that um, that that someone climbed to heaven oh. using the ribs of a cow, and that's why they call it Jacob's ladder. It was Jacob climbing up to heaven. Can you believe that story? Is that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> Were you expecting me to just like? I just I was joking. No. So is that the yeah, actual story? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mine. I mean, again, let's. You guys have got Google there. Let's just, so Jacob's ladder. It's all about getting up to heaven. I think Jacob was the guy, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Why is you may use also, a ladder? Feels like a lot of effort to get the beef bones. Just and a cool name for a piece of piece of meat, yeah, isn't it? Really? it. Okay, so James, why have I got a piece of cardboard here? This is just uh, crazy. Because you're a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> a little lie down there later yeah, on. Yeah. Uh, no, it's because when, you are, when you're smoking uh, with a hot fire like we have been doing today, yeah. um, if you put a little bit of cardboard down, you want to make sure it's nice and clean if you can. I mean, I'm not suggesting washing it or anything, but <laughs> just make sure it wasn't, that out, it, it wasn't out of the, like, the food bin or whatever. <laughs> uh, this has just been uh, here in our office, uh, and it was nice and clean when I picked it up. <laughs> so uh, what I do is I, I put that down on the grill, and and uh, it just creates a little protection between the piece of meat that you're cooking on. It's really good for brisket as well, actually. And uh, it just creates a little bit of a protection so it doesn't dry the underneath of the ribs or whatever meat it is that you're smoking. Would, would you wet it first? Uh, well, you can do if you're, if you're going to be cooking really close to the fire. But because we're not cooking close to the fire, we're probably about almost a meter away from it. There's no way that it's going to flare up, so you don't need to wet it. And because the fires that you set aren't normally that hot either, are they? It's your smoker, it's not, it's not my smoker. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Not, not, it's not my issue. Right, let's go in with uh, a little bit of a rub. I'm going to show you guys how to do a rub, and then James, you're going to do a spritz for us, okay? Oh, I am, yeah, yeah. Do you guys, you guys know, what, you know what a spritz is? No? It's a bit okay, of a, um, uh, yes, Chris, the Jacob's Ladder is quite a costly cut. Oh. Um, <laughs> I thought he was going to uh, back my story. <laughs> 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 it was a, there seems to be a hashtag <laughs> trending, uh, which is hashtag sweaty eyelids. Yes. Oh, another um, one. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, even my eyeballs are sweating so I, now. I, literally, I nearly wet my pants early on today because someone hashtagged Scott in a post saying hashtag sweaty eyelids. It um, was really hot in the office. I mean, it's just <laughs> boiling hot. What's wrong with this country? It's so hot at the moment. It's crazy. It is. It is. Go on, let's go on with it. Let's I'm enjoying it. it. Uh, right. So I'm going to go in with a little, a little uh, beef rub. Now, this is a very interesting one that we found when we went to Austin, we went to Franklin's, but we already knew Aaron Frank Franklin anyway. Yeah, we know but those guys. We know those guys. But <laughs> this, this here is a rub 
uh, that's really good for beef. It's very specifically for beef. Mm. And it's got a very secret ingredient in here. Does, well, Can I, you guys I, see I, what I, that I, is there? Joe, I don't know if you guys... Come on, come in, Joe, you're allowed, you're allowed. A little bit of a guess what that is. It's not cocoa nibs. No. Well, that'd be quite cool, though. They would. Yeah, I like that idea. Mm. Sorry, uh, I just you could probably put a chocolate in here, maybe it'd burn, wouldn't it? Uh, might do. Yeah, we'll have a little, we'll have a little play. I, can I th take a guess? Yeah, you take a guess. You should know what it is. You, you put it out on social. <laughs> yeah, is it coffee? It's coffee. Yeah, yeah. It's just regular granulated coffee. Knew it. Knew it. And you don't need to do anything other than just kind of mix all these rubs together. Right, let's get the. I just want to make sure I've got this rub correct. Because <laughs> I sometimes. <laughs> did you not know, you you know, check this before we start? Well, well no, no, I'll no. tell you what, I'll, I'll just go. So, Robert Jameson, any need to change anything smoking in a Weber kettle? What, uh, expand on that. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, I can only assume he means like because we've got a For barrel this. smoker. Yeah. And what what would you do in a Weber kettle? You just what well, would you just do? indirect. Yeah. I, would, you probably, s would you do a, a snake? Yeah, you could probably do a snake. Uh, it's a circular strategy where you've got your coal going around in a circle, and you start on one end. You put your beef in the middle. Make sure that it's quite quite far away from the beef. I yeah. would definitely use the cardboard. Yeah. Because the cardboard will protect the bottom of the ribs from uh, from burning and drying out. And then all you do is you just kind of, uh, as, as the coals burn in a circular snake, uh, it keeps, the, it keeps the, the temperature at bay and doesn't dry them out and it, it really ensures indirect cooking as, as best possible. God, he's so knowledgeable. Well, it was your idea. I just finished it off. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to come in with a rub. So we're going to go in with a coffee. I've got one tablespoon of coffee granules going in there. I've got a tablespoon of uh, pepper, black pepper. Nice. A tablespoon of salt. Definitely salt. Teaspoon of brown sugar. You don't want to put too much brown sugar in here or even regular sugar because it will burn. So just mm. a teaspoon of that. Just uh, for a little, little sweet kick. A little sweet kick, yep. yep. And then uh, the same, so a teaspoon of caster sugar. Nice. That's uh, Caster that. slightly smaller granules, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. it really helps. Yeah, you don't get the kind of uh, the granulation. Gran the granulation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, then you've got, now this is where I need to go. I've got some, uh, oh yeah, one <laughs> teaspoon of chipotle or just regular chili powder. Oh, you like the that's chipotle. Gonna be in the it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna get you that. Uh, then we've got uh, one teaspoon of paprika. Paprika. One, uh, so it's half a teaspoon of uh, ground ginger. How's and that? Then Do you enjoy that? Yes, it's lovely. <laughs> and then half a teaspoon of cumin, because we like cumin in our rubs. Right, uh, Gary Hutchinson saying like snakes and ladders. No, very different, Gary. Very different. If you're going to say something, make sure it's sensible. You know, we're trying to keep it. We're trying to keep this is educational, fact-filled. <laughs> Don't need those kind of jokes. Nice way to uh, tell So David too. Sheldon Walsh is saying use a water bath in a Weber kettle, yeah, as well to keep the temperatures nice. lower and create moisture, which is so what we've, we've got going on here. Actually, have we? it's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah we've got a water we're bath. We're ahead of you. We're ahead of you. No, but you're absolutely right. Water baths are really good, and you put that underneath a meat. Not, uh, not above the coal, uh, underneath the meat, so it's indirectly, so it's away from the coal. <laughs> I don't know why I had to explain that, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got, my, uh, I've got my coffee barbecue beef rub here, nice. which is awesome. I can smell it because the fan's blowing all the granules and the powder in my eyes <laughs> and my nose, and <clears throat> it's lovely because the, the, uh, the chili powder is really uh, potent. Could you, you wouldn't want to use coffee grounds though, would you, because they'd be a bit like. Yeah, no, I don't, that's, they, they're spent. I wouldn't use them. You want to use no, some fresh of ones. No, because they're not really edible. No. This is edible. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. All right, so that's, that's your what rub. I was saying you wouldn't do that. That's your rub. Okay, so you're going to get some gloves on and give this a bit of a bit of a rub around if you want. <laughs> <laughs> get him back. Uh, right, <laughs> I've got some French's mustard. You can use, you can use French. Uh, you can what use other English. mustard could you use? English. What other mustard could you use? South the South Carolina Reds Barbecue, South oh, no, Carolina actually, Barbecue. I shouldn't sauce. have said that because we don't sell it in the shops. We've anymore. got it. We've got it over here to serve yeah, the beef ribs with it. So we a little private stash. I know. I know. There's none left, is there? No. All right. I'm going to go in with uh, probably that much. I reckon there's two tablespoons there. Yeah. You want to give it a good a good la slathering. <sighs> uh, how are you going to get on there with the uh, with the iPad? Do you want me to read some questions out while you no, do that? No, I nearly scratched my head with my gloves on. Oh, okay. Right, yeah, so okay, you want it all over? Yeah, just give it all over. I'm, uh, do... I'm not doing bone side, am I? Yeah, I want to do bone side too because oh. I want the rub to stick to the beef. Now, if you don't have mustard, no, give it a, give the the mustard uh, first. Oh yeah. Yeah, mustard first. That's it. That's good. No, this is fine because this that is good. that is the right way to do it. <laughs> do you remember when we came we... Um, fourth in the world in the World Barbecue Championships? Oh, when you weren't there. I was there. <laughs> I mean, um, you, were, you were there physically. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Mentally, and, uh, you were else. Oh, oh, giving it a real massage there. <laughs> it feels really nice. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I did. Okay. Yeah. All right, flip it over. I'll do the bones. Ah! No, okay. No, no, yeah. All oh, right. You want to do that way? Okay. Always have a dry hand, and then have a wet hand, and then your rub you can use again. Go on, give me some mustard. Okay. There we go. A little uh, moustard there. So I'll do your way now. There you go. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, is it, you think I've just met you? <laughs> Damn it, I didn't get you either. <laughs> right, I'm going to put that on there so we can serve that later. Yeah, you'd think it's like this is the first time I've ever met you and I don't, I don't know your <laughs> gags. All right, well, that's looking really good now. Do you want some more of this rub on there? Uh, I mean, you don't want to go too heavy on it. Have you, have you done the sides as well, yeah? Yeah, I'm doing them. Oh, yeah, oh doing. yeah, look at that. I mean, you are. You are treating that like a lady, aren't you? <laughs> no. It's, uh, punch it. <laughs> Here you go. Look, on, one last one here. Yep. Oh, yes. Oh, give that some. There we go. Now, if, you, if you've got loads and loads of rub on here, it can take away the flavor from the beef, so you don't want to have too much. Just a I nice, think that's just right. A nice uh, Also, if you are going to put some on, make sure you lift the flaps and really get... get flaps. If you've got, you've got to lift it, because this does have flaps. You have to pay quite a lot of attention to... Cow um, flaps, Pratty. Cow in, flaps. Inside the flaps. Oh, time for a we're good. Beer. We're done. I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Happy Sunday. Yeah. No, we're not done. Done. I mm. mean, I'm done with the rubbing. No. So that's gonna. So I mean, you could leave that aside, um, refrigerate it overnight if you want. If you want to prep a day before, <coughs> I like to have the rub on and and everything on the on the beef or even the brisket or the ribs for at least an hour or two. So imagine that's being kind of marinating, um, covered up away from the flies. And, uh, and then you've got at least the a couple flies. of hours in There's flies. Uh, you, or <laughs> put it in the fridge. Wait, put it in the wait, fridge. you're cooking it like Mozambique. Anyway, uh, Chris Bart says, don't you put the water above the coals and the drip tray under the meat? No, I, no, you, I, I tend not to. I, I always put the, uh, the water underneath because uh, otherwise it just boils drip. up and it just yeah, gets yeah. too wet. It gets too steamy in there and you don't get a bark on your, on, your, on your meat. It needs to be away from the coal and just below the meat. It's, it's like, like contra ambient. controversial one here. <laughs> David Sheldon Moore, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Uh, Worcestershire sauce as a bind on the beef for me, fellas. That's coming now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming. now. Well done. Uh, and Philip Neal says, I need rubbing, lol. You need rubbing wall? No, he says, I need rubbing. Lol. Oh, lol. Okay. Got it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, if um, maybe we could do that as a takeout next week. Yeah. Uh, come down. If anybody wants to massage. come down and we can massage. Don't ever let James massage you with beef rub. Oh, I'll share that video I again. I did yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, years ago when we launched Nottingham uh, yeah, yeah. about five years ago it was actually in this office it was uh, 2nd of December it was <laughs> yeah, pretty freaking cold 20 below and, uh, and we were doing these, these short little uh, 15 second video 20 second videos yeah, or whatever yeah. and, uh, and I had to lay down on a, uh, on a table and James rubbed uh, beef rib uh, rub all over me ben and it, yeah, managed yeah. to get it in my crotch and there's KN. I don't know if you notice the ingredients. There's KN in there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was it wasn't <laughs> pleasant. <laughs> uh, yeah. If anybody wants to see that, please make a comment, and I'll uh, I'll post that. It's awful, show. awful. Okay. Now you need a spritz because whenever this is cooking over the next you know six hours, whatever yep. the number is, you want to have uh, you want to have the ability to kind of give it a little bit of a basting. It's mm. like when you do roast chicken at home, you baste it with this fat. You, that's what you want to do. But here, I've got a squeezy bottle. You can use a spray bottle as well. Make yep. sure it's clean and it's not got any disinfectants or anything in there. <laughs> I've got apple juice, 200 mils of apple juice. I've got cider vinegar, 100 mils of cider vinegar. That just gives it that little kind of little tang. And then as per your suggestion, Worcester sauce. Worcester sauce. Uh, I've got two tablespoons in there. And that is gonna be your, your spritz. We call it a spritz because that's uh, it's like a bit of barbecue term. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why it's called a spritz. It is. It, that's it's what it not. is. Uh, Bill Decker, believe it or not, has made a comment that doesn't involve trout. Wow. Excellent. He said, I mean, he is, he's gone low. He's saying, pay lots of attention to the flaps and it will make the beef nice and moist. Wow. So I totally get it. Darren Anley's saying maybe you could spit roast it. <laughs> I don't know whether we can what do that. What is going on? Yeah, this is, I mean, what, who's watching this? Um, and uh, Robert James says, I remember them, but I don't remember what he's remembering, so. Right, so we've got a smoker preheated at 250 degrees centigrade. Um, you want to have coal and you want to have some logs in there. We've used oak. We always tend to use oak. You can use cherry, hickory, apple chunks, whatever you can get. Um, and we, we like to smoke uh, this, this product at about 250 all the way through. Uh, until you hit about between 83 and 85 degrees centigrade so yeah. Celsius. Uh, I don't know whether we're there yet, but we will find out. 78. 78, okay. If we hit 80, it'll look good. It's okay. Right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to, uh, to the smoker. We're gonna put this on. We'll show you guys how to apply the cardboard as well. And then we'll just, um, we'll just see how this cornbread's doing. Right, why don't we check on the cornbread before we do the I thing? just have, it looks oh. good. All oh, right. okay, great. Yeah, it looks really good actually. Do I, I need an oven way. glove for the top? Why don't you have a quick, um, yeah, you lift that up for me. You yeah, ready? yeah, ready when you are. Thank you. Oh, lovely. Oh, oh. ah, it's all in a, ah! a little package there. It is. 
tell us why? Can I put this down? Yes. All right, so because this product can get, I mean, it's, it's, it's ribs and it's beef ribs and they get used a hell of a lot. You've got to, uh, you've got to smoke it for about two or three hours and then you've got to put it into some kind of parchment paper, butcher's paper, whatever you can use, tin foil if you want as well. And the reason why you do that is because it kind of creates a bit of a steamy environment and mm. it pushes that heat right into the middle of the ribs and breaks down all that collagen uh, and turns it into jelly. So the reason why we've done this is uh, because we wanted to try and make sure that we've got a really tender rib nice. and not a dried out, you know, kind of, you know, flip flop, which you can get. I'm going to get rid of that quickly. We don't need that here. Right. So um, I'm just going to show you guys here. What we tend to do is put that down. You don't need to apply any kind of moisture to that at all. And all I'm going to do now is go in with a beef rib. Wow. I'd get, I'd get a couple of logs on now as well. Then if you want to do that, James. Uh, not really. No, <coughs> not bothered. <laughs> No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, can't be, but can't be asked. <laughs> no, no I, it's because I've got this. So, <clears throat> so Neil Wormy's got in touch, and this is quite fortuitous. That um, sorry, it's just it a finished. log. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a log. Um, so Neil Wormy is the reason why we're not actually going to eat these tonight. Oh, is he picking those up? He is. It's so nice we, uh, we, I was going through Facebook comments and stuff last night, and uh, I noticed on there that there was a chap called Neil Wormy who lives in Leeds. And he had bought, he was watching, he saw the post. Yeah. He literally got up from the garden, drove to the butchers, bought some beef ribs. Right. Said to his missus, back in 10 minutes, went back, put them in the fridge, and was hoping that he could cook along with us today. Oh. And have them for his tea tonight. Yeah. Oh. Not realizing that actually there's a, like a six hour process yeah. on it. So, okay. I felt really, really bad about that. Because uh, he'd, you know, he'd gone and made a special trip to buy them. We sh probably should have said that. Uh, probably. Cook along live. Yeah, yeah, maybe. probably, yeah. probably. Um, so actually, well, I, I offered for him to come down after the show and pick him up. Social distancing apply. Yes, I'll live obviously. outside. He can bang on the door and stuff. So he's going to come down and pick him up. Brilliant. And he's going to eat him tonight. That's awesome. Can you send some photos in when you've eaten them as well? Yeah. And it should be cooked by then as well. Hopefully. Yeah, it should. <laughs> he did have a question though. And the question is, uh, my butcher's already cut my meat into four chops. Will that make any difference to the end taste? You want to just, what would you reckon, skewers? Should we get the skewers back out? Uh, wait, sorry, well, I'm, 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 do you mean they, they chopped it into bones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, you don't. Cook uh. faster though, won't it? It does cook faster. You get more of a smokiness. It does dry them out more. You know, it's, it's a bit like cooking a single belly rib versus a pork belly in your, uh, in your oven. It's not great. But your idea of putting them together you skewers. probably don't. You probably don't. I mean, the skewer would be fine. We but love you don't skewers. really want to go through the meat. You want because you, you, it'll just all the juices will, fl uh, will flow out. Yeah. I would just put them together and, uh, and just try and keep them as close as you can. Try and cook them together so that they, you know, they give it a, a, some protection to each other, and see how you get on. But they're going to shrink, and you are going to get gaps between each of the ribs. I wish I, the reason why I didn't want to put the bone on the log on was oh. because we have to turn the extract the smoker. off. Smoker, and now the, the fire alarms are going to go. All oh, right, fair enough. Well, we can put it, probably put it on then. Uh, Josh right. Rhodes, he's already got his ribs. Uh, got a, he's already got them. He's cooking them one day this week. Uh, he's put the rub on this morning. Just needs to pick a day to uh, get up early. Right. So yeah, any day you want. This place is going to burn down in a minute. I can't yeah. believe he's done that. I'm sorry, didn't really think. Um, right, cornbread. Let's have a look to see where we're at. Yep, go for it. Mix watching. Mix back on our mic. How are you, Paul? Ooh. Oh, look at these. They're looking cute, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, a little bit pale. Well, oh, that's a nice colour. Yeah, that's good. Do you want to get in, Joe? Go on, I'll allow you in. Allow you in for a look. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, and now we've got... Um, where do you want to... Should we build the washroom over there? <laughs> Let's build a dish over there, then it looks a bit prettier than over here. Yeah. <laughs> Do you mean in the fire? Yes. I mean, that's no longer a fire. That's now become a hazard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right, then. So, do us a favor. I might have to turn the extract on. Uh, nah, you'll be all right for now. All right. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Go now, do me a favor. Can you start, um, can you pull that out of here and also these muffins too and, yeah. and display them on our wonderful board, please? I can, yeah. That'd yeah. be amazing. Thank you. I'm going to get these beef ribs out. Uh, I need to find something to do it with there. Woo! Don't forget, guys. Is there any way you can get that log out? After an hour, mm, I can try. It's a log out. These, are, these do actually look pretty good. So I would normally have done them slightly darker. But, uh, well, how would you have done them? <laughs> As I've never done them before. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me get this log out and then it'll stop, it, it'll stop the smoking happening. It's actually not that bad. So we have to, basically, we have to turn the extract system off. Um, 
when uh, when we're doing this because if we had it turned on, you wouldn't be able to hear us at all. Which I mean, some would say is probably slightly better than uh, than what we have now. Um, right. But yeah, if you put a log on the fire, then it, it kind of does go a bit crackers. So this one is a. Oh, how's that looking? Some, we've got some stickage. Stickage is all right. Yeah. That yeah, but I mean, literally, much. I might have to spoon it out. Oh, no. uh, it's also got the bottom. Don't forget. So I put the little uh, little bit of no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm on good, the bottom. Good. That might have saved it. Right there's your uh, there's your beef rib package. Nice package, I must yeah, say. Uh, what do you reckon, harvesters? Just leave it like that, and then uh, we what can get else? the you can get the compound butter on it as well. Then oh, can't we now? Oh, check you out. Just can get out there. Oh, lovely, well, lovely. All right, so that's going to go there. Get the uh, get these beef ribs out. Just have a little beer. Cheers, everyone. What are you all drinking? Anyone? Let me know. Rosé, red wine, beer, cocktails. C cocktails at home. Nah, no one's making cocktails. Uh, right. Bill Decker's asking where we got the serving board from. We had that med about seven. Is that the fire alarm? I have no idea. This sounds cool. Uh, anyway, right, let's say. Uh, yeah. Yay! <laughs> <I believe. laughs> oh, wow. That is Knew great. <laughs> there we go. There's your beef ribs there. We'll just turn the, uh, we'll just turn the fire alarm off quickly. It won't take long. We actually don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> this might take some time. Right, Joe, so go in here and have a look at this. Sort of smoking coming through here. Wow, that's a, that is a loud, that's a loud fire alarm. I don't think he knows how to turn it off. <laughs> right, well, we got our beef rib going on there. And then we've got it's our here as well. Have you moved the key for the fire alarm box? <laughs> Right, let's get some of this compound butter on here. Right. There you go. I mean, that's really loud. <laughs> okay, some more compound butter on here. And there. Oh, look at that. Right, there we go. Okay, so that's your beef ribs and your cornbread, your deviled cornbread. We like it with a little bit of South Carolina as well. And uh, I reckon that's probably going to be the end of the show, guys. <laughs> right, thanks for watching. Enjoy your beef rib and your cornbread. See you later.